So we go on to the next uh, topic. Yes. The next team is going to be led by Dr. Swati Kalki, who is the head of the Department of Ophthalmology in Plastic and Facial Aesthetics, Orbit and Ocular Oncology at uh, LV Prasad uh, Institute, who would contest on management of limbal ocular surface squamous neoplasia with primary interferon. She is going to be countered by Dr. Aditya Pradhan, who is a consultant cornea, external disease and cataract from Disha IE Hospitals, who is going to talk on management of limbal ocular surface uh, squamous neoplasia where excision followed by immunotherapy is advised. Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Chitra. So I will take over from here. I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, my slides are visible. Yeah. Okay. So good evening, everyone. So over the next six minutes, I'll try to convince all those who are listening to this talk to why uh, primary interferon is a very good modality of treatment for ocular surface squamous neoplasia. I do not have any financial disclosures to make. I'll start with this uh, case where this is a lady. Uh, she's a lady who presented with uh, complaints in the left eye. And as can be seen, the patient has diffuse ocular surface squamous neoplasia. Now let us see what can happen to this eye if we go ahead with excisional biopsy. This is what we will end up with if we do excisional biopsy. As we can see that the patient has a severely compromised ocular surface with total limbal stem cell deficiency. So would you want to do the same thing if you encounter another patient presenting similarly? Definitely not. Here is another example. So here this patient presented with complaints in the right eye. And if we have a close-up picture of this eye, we can see that it is very much similar to the first case that I showed. So given a choice, would I go ahead with excisional biopsy? No, not, not for sure. So in this case, what we did was simple, just use medical treatment for this patient. So we used uh, interferon drops along with injection interferon. And you can see the change after uh, treatment, the, the lesion has completely disappeared and has not caused any complications on the ocular surface. So when we talk about treatments of uh, ocular surface squamous neoplasia, of course, there are many options that are available. But interferon alpha 2b currently is one of the medi one of the uh, treatment modality that is used very often, and it is often referred to as the magic drops. Why is it called as the magic drops? I've shown you one example. I'll follow it up with more examples now. Now it was first, of course, it was it started with a single case report in 1994, and then we have enough evidence now that it is a very effective modality of treatment. But why, why is it that the first case was reported in 94 and it never took off? Uh, it's mainly because of the cost, because it's, it's a very expensive medication. So this, um, this is one of the cases that we had seen back in 2013. And uh, when uh, we wanted to treat medically for this patient, as I've shown in the first case, so surgical surgery was not um, the best option for this patient. We wanted to go ahead with medical treatment. But if we have to use interferon, it's a very expensive treatment and the patient cannot afford it. Then we started uh, exploring if there are options in the Indian market where we can, uh, we can have a lesser expensive medication. And that's when, um, when we researched, we, uh, we saw that we have three MIU and five MIU interferon, which is available in Indian market, uh, which costs less than thousand rupees. And that's when we started using this drug. And in fact, this was the first case that we, that we treated with the interferon. And as it can be seen that the lesions completely disappeared and this patient now has completed more than five years of follow-up with no evidence of recurrence. Uh, we can use it um, both for the conjunctival lesions or sometimes when it is restricted only to the corneal lesions. So how, we, how do we inject? So we just uh, simply, it's a very minor procedure which can be done in the OPD itself where we identify an area where there are no feeder vessels, then we inject it, inject the drug and cause ballooning of the conjunctiva. And in addition, we also give uh, topical medications as well to this patient so that um, the effectiveness is better. So here are examples when interferon alone has been sufficient uh, for uh, treatment of the lesions. Um, here you can see two examples where uh, the lesions have completely disappeared with interferon alone without the need for any surgical intervention. 
Now, it's not just for small lesions, but for larger lesions as well, such as these, the third case you've already seen before. Now, these are other examples where diffuse lesions have been taken care of with uh, the topical and um, the injection interferon. And it can be seen that all patients have done extremely well without any complications on the ocular surface, which wouldn't have been the case for sure if we had done surgery on these cases. And we have published our results as well, where we have shown that it is very effective treatment, where good response is seen in 95% of the cases with minimal side effects, and it can be cost effective. It's almost uh, comparable to the cost of a surgery. Um, uh, of course, like, you know, uh, it can be said that it is effective only in 95% of the cases. What about the remaining 5% of the cases? And also, what about the side effects that it causes? The only side effects that it causes are flu-like symptoms, which can be seen in many cases, and conjunctival hyperemia. But these are very transient, and the flu-like symptoms, they just disappear with paracetamol, which is taken for just a single day. Uh, the patients do well, and conjunctival hyperemia as well is very, very uh, temporary, and it goes away once the dro drops are stopped. Um, the challenges that can occur is that it has to be freshly prepared, it has to be refrigerated, may require multiple follow-up visits and long duration of treatment. But does that mean that we do not go for, the, uh, for this treatment? Certainly not. We have to look for other alternatives. And so the other alternative, other alternative medical management we have available is the 5-fluorouracil, which again is a very good modality of treatment. I'll just show you a few examples of uh, this patient has a small OSSN where we gave uh, medical treatment with 5-fluorouracil. And you can see that with just one cycle, just one week of treatment of 5-FU, the lesion completely disappeared. So here, there is no uh, problem with like, you know, the long duration of treatment because it shows very, very quick response. And here is another example where you can see there is extensive lesion. And again, just with one cycle of one week treatment of 5-fluorouracil, the treatment, the lesion completely disappeared without the need for surgery, without the need for multiple visits for the patient. Again, 5-FU is extremely cheap. It is available as uh, just 50 rupees, though mm -hmm. each one costs only 50 rupees and the patient doesn't have to travel to us very often as well. Now, it, it is also an effective alternative modality for patients who do not respond to interferon. As can be seen, this patient had received uh, three months of interferon and still had residual lesion, as can be seen here, with um, the thicker areas which are present within that circle. And this patient we gave, um, we changed the medical management to 5-fluorouracil. We did not want to go for surgery. As you can see that there is already a pseudoterygium inferiorly because he had undergone surgery before coming to us. And you can see that the lesion completely disappeared with just one week of treatment of 5-fluorouracil. Um, and sometimes when a tumor recurs after another medical uh, treatment with interferon, we can certainly switch over the drug. This is after interferon treatment and the patient had recurrence. And this we just gave uh, 5 fluorouracil And after one uh, cycle, you can see that uh, the lesion has uh, disappeared. So medical treatment uh, for OSSN is definitely an effective primary treatment for OSSN. I'll close my case with just two examples. So here are two different lesions treated differently. The first one was treated with surgical excision and you can see that there is a pseudoterygium that is present uh, where the previous tumor was. And this is what we did for the second patient where medical treatment was done where the patient does not develop any scarring on the ocular surface. So based on this, what would you choose? Would you go for surgery or would you go for medical treatment? It's for you to decide now. So with this, I close my um, debate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Swati. That was a wonderful talk. And I really want to know how Dr. Uh, Pradhan is going to contest you. <laughs>